Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is episode four of the Tiger King, as the title suggests. Um, honestly, the entry is pretty blunt. Not much to say about it in the beginning right here, so uh, let's just let's just jump right into it. Oh gosh. This is episode four, episode four of Tiger King. Um, here we go. So it starts off with a music video. It's a bop. Look. I love that he's singing in the in the thing, you know, at the recording studio, but it's not actually his voice. We've all come to, uh, yeah, discover. Not only oh, does wow. he, not only does he have a ghost writer, he's got a ghost singer. Someone else sings for him the whole time. So it's like when we found out that Drake was was lip syncing and. Uh, and ghostwriting as well. This is like the biggest betrayal I've ever had in my entire life. Like we've said multiple times, Joe Exotic makes for great TV. He like makes he for really great does. TV. That's a that's a one thing out of this whole thing, and that's why I think there's all these hashtag free Joe Exotic things and everything because you, you like him. Like even like you, and I don't know why, but he has a quality about him which is highly entertaining to watch. I think it's amazing. I think he's a class one manipulator, um, especially after this past episode. And I think it's amazing to see that he can not only manipulate those around him, but he can manipulate the entire populace. Like, that's really amazing. So he talks about all Carol's people being brainwashed. No, no, my dear. I, I too, am brainwashed on I do still have, see endearing qualities in you, and you're not an endearing human. So that's, you know, it's wild. Um, basically, number one, I mean, he just keeps shooting off his gun in this episode. It's really like me <laughs> about just firing shots into the air, firing shots into a blow up doll. He's named Carol, and not only that, but put a company name tag on her that says Carol. This entire episode, he has a, it shows his vendetta. I guess not he has a vendetta. Apparently, he had the vendetta for years and years against Carol and just pushed it too far and and then she saw her opportunity to sue him and hell we're in america you do it girlfriend i'd be pissed i would be so done with him being like this she, she sees the opportunity it. to sue this guy that was legitimately threatening her life would show up on her property uninvited and threaten her life and she was finally like, maybe this will shut him up. Let's steal. Let's take his money from him. You know, maybe that'll shut him up. You know, kind of thing. Which I can totally understand where she was coming from and where her husband was coming from on that. Her new husband, that is not the one she fed to the tigers. But <laughs> I will say, if anyone gets a chance and wants to see the other side of this docu series, um, on Big Cat Rescue, Howard has done his own video about his take on this. And it is, it's a, I think it's like 15 to 20 minutes long, and it's worth the watch because it really just sums up their side of it. Throughout the entirety of the episode, Joe is consistently like, well, I don't understand why she could sue me or why she was suing me. Meanwhile, he is stealing her intellectual property and not using it in a transformative ma like manner. So what he's doing does not fall under fair use. Property. Exactly. It doesn't fall under fair use whatsoever. So she can sue him totally legally. Him saying, so there's several things Joe just contradicts himself on um, this time. Number one, he says Carol um, drained his parents of money. Carol didn't drain his parents of money, which I just caught in this episode. I hadn't caught that before. Woo! Parents of money. And, and his mom just signed anything he put in front of her. Like, he is a class one manipulator. And he's and abusing thing, he's abusing seniors. That's an abuse of senior citizens. Online, crying about losing her home and everything. Meanwhile, he had done that to her. She's like, literally... there's an There are videos of this... Oh, I, it's literally making me choke up. There is literally videos of this old woman begging and pleading for her money not to be taken from her anymore. You know, she doesn't want the furniture taken from her home, which is, like, I mean, that's so heartbreaking. And her son has done that to her. It's, it's Joe! The whole time, it's mm -hmm. Joe Exotic. It is not mm -hmm. Carol. It's Joe doing this. He's like, yeah. hey, mom, please sign this. You know, he's not, he's not being like, hey, you know this is basically in your name or whatever he's just like hey mom for this whole case you just need to kind of sign this just kind of slide it under the radar you know what i mean it's and, yeah what upset me too about that too was you could see in the video she says like she's just jealous of him and that his zoo is better than hers she doesn't run a zoo 
she does not care about whether his zoo is better or what what she cares about is no more cub petting no more breeding and she wants to shut him down mm. so that's why she's taking all this she she honestly wants to shut him down and you know what when you watch the stuff that's happening to the animals you pay attention to the documentary you see all those tigers in that tiny little feed cage pacing back and forth they don't have enough food like it's just it's and and they didn't have good food to begin with if you look at the first part and then another thing he contradicts himself on in this episode is the rabbit predicament where he's talking about how Carol has butchered these rabbits and she's taking photos uh, with her volunteers online and glorifying killing rabbits. Well, the volunteers, it was done, number one, in poor taste, I think. Uh, like, she shouldn't have had that photo online. We are all aware as a public that tigers are carnivores, so that's definitely what they're going to eat. But in this day and age, it's not what the internet wants to see. So I can see where a lot of hate for her comes from that. But then let's just scan over to what Joe does, where he takes a photo with a literal butchered horse's penis and tells her to suck it. So he does the same thing. But even worse, because he knows what he's doing. Like, like it's wild. Those keepers, those keepers were just like, well, my favorite cat's going to eat this this rabbit, finally. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, it's like a treat for the cats, was yeah. basically what it was. Yeah. Which, mm. and this is, now this is coming from someone who's who's worked behind the scenes, who's been a zookeeper in two different, well, three different zoos technically, but two different where I've seen the real nitty gritty side of everything behind the scenes. Yeah, big cats are predators. Like, that's just what happens, and they will eat a lot of animals like that's again that's just what happens with our big snakes and our monitor lizards and stuff we would thump rabbits constantly i was never the one to do it because i like i would literally cry if i had to do it like not even <laughs> i'm very sensitive when it comes to killing animals very sensitive but i know that those animals have to eat so feeding them doesn't really bother me and seeing someone feed them doesn't really bother me either so i can i can see where like the idea of like okay that's not going to offend anyone comes into the play but then all of a sudden like you've got a bunch of people like hey you know why are you feeding these rabbits to these to these tigers and stuff like that and suddenly you're like well i didn't think about that because that literally never crosses my mind because i'm constantly feeding these like bambi and thumper and <laughs> all these like beloved disney characters to a snake or to a tiger or to a crocodile so i don't really see where that's like a big problem but coming from someone who's worked outside of the zoo industry and stuff like that and heard a lot of people who have never seen the behind the scenes of these um uh parks and stuff it's like well i can see now <laughs> how that would be an issue but coming from someone like carol who has never really worked behind this or outside of the zoo keeping or the exotic animal keeping or the predator keeping um uh, parks i can see how that would be like a well why didn't that like translate well <laughs> you know to the public <laughs> but but those people didn't understand what they were doing joe knew what he was doing with the butchered animal Let, let's talk about the um the arson of the alligator place that's is that where you were going <laughs> I'm going to blow your mind, actually. I have a fun fact to share with you that I found out from the internet. I don't think I told you about it. No, probably um, not. Those are Michael Jackson's alligators. Like, seriously? <laughs> seriously? Those are Michael Jackson's alligators. Somehow the GW Zoo got a hold of Michael Jackson's alligators, and then Joe Exotic friggin' burned them up in arson. <laughs> <laughs> I'll think about that for a minute. Let's just all think about that for a minute. <laughs> yeah, like, my man Joe Exotic, he burned these alligators alive. Like, <laughs> he sure did. Michael Jackson's alligators, friggin' rip. Honestly, first off, <laughs> his alligators are now dead. They can never reproduce. So, good job, Joe. Here we go. Amazing. <laughs> Do you have anything else you want to say about uh about the alligator burning up? He 100 percent burned it. Oh. Like there's there's no one else that would have benefited from that. You say Carol Baskin would have benefited from that? No, she wanted there was a subpoena for everything in that building to go to the court system. He didn't want that coming out. It's gone. Like in no way did she not want that coming out. You see, even just from the bare minimum of what Netflix films on his place that it is not the best place for animals the way he transports them the small cages like everything so don't even tell me 
It's wild. Honestly, the only person that would have benefited from that place burning up would be him with the insurance money that he got out of it. I don't think the guy that that, that said he was going to do the documents, uh, like the the series or whatever, burned it up either. Because that was his. That's the thing. So he got in a fight with um, that creep. I can't remember what his name is. The one that does all Just the, the creep. The, but he got in a fight with him about how um, all of that actually belongs to. I, I think it's Ray or Rick. It doesn't belong to Joe. And, and so that's, I, I honestly think that's where the stemmed and also the subpoena just put more pressure on him. So he just burned the whole thing. And they say that he was out of town for it, but I would really like to know because the, the, the footage they show, it looks like him, like Joe Exotic walking to go burn these, like burn up the alligator. I've, I've never seen another man with the walk cycle of Joe Exotic like I have with that grainy footage the security cam footage of that man walking to a burn of those alligators. Like, that's seriously, that was Joe Exotic. And then, um, to also say, he mentions halfway through that that they do not have a veterinarian on site. So, oh my I would gosh. Like to preface this as someone who has been a supporter of Big Cat Rescue for a long time. But if you ever want to know about the care of their cats, they actually live stream every veterinary visit. So you can physically watch their cats be cared for by a veterinarian that they have on staff, take care of their animals, and this week actually one of their animals passed away, and I don't think Marcus has gotten into it yet, but it's one of the bobcats um, that was from um, the litter of kittens that she she bought from the fur trade, Um, So and it was the last one. So... I know. Kind of the end of an era for that. Like, regardless of whether you agree with her or not, it's kind of the end of an era, so... Bless yeah. up real quick. Pour one out for my boy, Bobcat. Joe's cubs, they say in this episode, were going to Vegas so that Jeff Lowe and his wife could use them to entice girls into their swinger community. Stop it. That's animal abuse. He was smuggling tigers into Las Vegas so that he could get laid with his wife. That's ridiculous. And halfway through that episode, Carol demands from Joe that he needs to pay $5,000 a month, and then he says she gets greedy and asks him to stop breeding and stop cub petting. She was trying to stop those cubs from traveling over there, from being abused the way they're being abused, from we even see in this episode a mother tiger giving birth and Joe using metal like prongs to pry them away from their mother so that he's at a safe distance and take them away so he can get them petted and um, make money off of them, exploit them. And he even has them in his house and he's so effing sick of them. He's so mad at them, blah, blah, blah. They're so loud. They're screaming. They're crying for their mother. Like, it's just, it's so... He throws he throws a blanket on top of the litter that was just born to shut them up. I haven't even seen purebred cat breeders that are not breeders of exotic animals, nor are they breeders of endangered animals. I haven't seen them treat their animals with that care, with that nonchalant amount of care, rather. He doesn't care. Like he really, and that's the thing, it's really frustrating because at the beginning of this, and you do see in the last episode, I think he did when he started this, I think he did care. He even says, like in the last episode, there's one point, not to spoil it for you, but he says, I just want to save these animals. And he's like going into how like, um, they shouldn't be in captivity. And it's just like, he saw the money and he ran with it. And everyone else is saying Carol's doing the same thing, but she's not exploiting these animals, making a profit off of them. She's trying to keep them from that. So it's just, it's really frustrating to watch, especially when like, I feel like Netflix really didn't explain it because they knew, I mean, what they had was already salacious enough without kind of dragging Carol through the mud. Um, but like, it is, it is amazing. Clearly, I agree. Clearly now we are on the same, same wavelength as opposed to in the beginning where I was like, well, Joe doesn't seem that bad, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Jeff Lowe was, was introduced and Jeff Lowe seems like for lack of a better word, a money grubbing whore. That's yeah. That's he it. seems. Oh, let's get on to the next one. On to the next one. I'm gonna film the outro for this one real quick. Hey everyone, I want to thank you very much so for watching. Uh, this was episode four. Episode five's coming at you pretty soon. Pretty soon. I uh, just wanted to say, uh, proud of you guys. Thanks for coming back to my channel. Uh, thank you for not speeding in a residential area like that guy was. Hope you guys have a good night or a good day or whatever time it is you're watching this. 
and uh, see you guys next time you tune in. Thanks for watching again.